Hi, I'm Ken Furukawa from KenFurukawa.com. And in this episode of the MMO Insiders, I'll be interviewing JK Dottle. JK has established himself as a leader in the internet marketing space. He's helped thousands of online entrepreneurs, myself included, get into the internet marketing world by producing high quality educational products. He's built himself a thriving business and despite all his success, he continues to give back to this community. So I want to welcome J.K. Dottle. Hey, J.K. Hey, Thank you for having <laughs> me on, man. It's great to be here. Yeah, awesome. I'm so glad that you're here. <clears throat> um, you know, the the whole purpose of, of these videos are basically to educate people. I mean, we're going to talk business, but I also wanted to um, just educate people on what it really takes to be successful. And, you know, you've, <clears throat> you've had a you have a very interesting story about how you got to where you are now. So maybe you can touch upon it because you started at a very young age. Yeah, no, I, I started in internet marketing when I was 16 going on 17. Um, so that would have been back in 2006, mid uh, towards the end of 2006. And um, when I started, it was just honestly, I, I saw that there was a lot of people online who were just kind of talking in, in various discussion rooms that I was in and like back when forums were more popular, a lot of people seemed to be making money online. And I always thought that it was just kind of a, a scam or there wasn't like, how do you do this? Or you probably need like to have a lot of budget or experience. And I started to kind of investigate it at that point. I was actually still in high school and I just kind of was curious about it and I wanted to know how it all worked. And, and I started by uh, just building websites. I just wanted to learn how to build websites. I was kind of interested in being a web designer and actually, um, I was I was not very good at it, but it was something that I had kind of started with. And uh, someone hired me to build their website for a restaurant. It was actually my dad was a restaurant uh, restaurateur, and uh, someone that he knew very well was opening up their first restaurant, and they wanted to have a website. And that was my very first gig that I ever got paid for. And I think I got paid seven hundred dollars for a, a WordPress install. And I was like, wow, that was. That was fun and uh, I learned a lot doing it. And obviously if I can do this again and again, then I can make more money by doing it. And it just kind of filtered out from there that you know other people might want websites built for other reasons. And, and it just kind of skyrocketed from there. And, and I just got interested in the idea of affiliate marketing and, and how that works. And, and I became really good at, at like ranking websites on in Google for certain keywords. It was much easier back then, obviously. And everything just kind of, I, I just started to accumulate these different skills and eventually it got to the point where I found that a lot of people wanted to pay because I was able to do things really well. And, and I became really successful in my early twenties, um, basically building pre-made affiliate blogs that were already pre-ranked for keywords and came with some Facebook ad stuff and some Google ad stuff. And I'd sell it as like a kind of turnkey website essentially. And I became really successful at that. Uh, and then just being in my early twenties, I was really, let's say uh, irresponsible with the success that I had. And it kind of led to a pretty stupendous downfall. And I had to go and get like one of my first jobs when I was like 23 or 22 mm -hmm. and uh, having nothing on your resume. I had to start from the ground up. I worked in call centers and stuff like that. And eventually you just kind of, I missed it. I wanted to get back into it and I did. And, and everything had changed in the, the, the few years that I'd, I'd worked for other people and I had to kind of relearn everything from scratch. And there were still a lot of skills that I had that either weren't relevant anymore or were slightly relevant. And I had to kind of learn how to put all that back together. And now I'm at a point where things are certainly trending upwards and keep growing and growing more and more every single month. And it's just been a great adventure. And I'm not really looking at it as kind of a final, a final thing that I'm moving towards. I'm not looking for like a big crescendo. I'm just enjoying the journey and just kind of, learning as I go and helping other people learn. And, and that's kind of from how I got started to where I am now. There's been a lot of bumps on the way, but yeah, it's been, it's been a really good journey so far. Yeah. And one of the things that when I, in, in reading your story, that really was just interesting because a lot of people like myself, we all come from, you know, the work world, we all work these yeah. nine to five jobs and all of a sudden we get sucked into this whole world <laughs> to make money online yes. world. <laughs> and you, on the other hand, you, you know, were because of your father being a restaurateur, mm. got you into that. So it's kind of like almost born and bred into you to be an yeah. entrepreneur. And, um, you know, I just find it interesting how you have this meteoric rise, right? <laughs> at the, in the early wild, wild west days of Google. Yeah. And then, you know, with the whole algorithm changes and stuff that probably, you know, what led to the, the, the crash. But 
you've really yeah. built yourself up um, through all these learning experiences. And I think, you know, you, you touched upon it very quickly, but, you know, you struggled. You struggled. Yeah. And I don't think people understand how much of a struggle it was for you after, you know, having this success to go back and, you know, with your tail between your legs and say, hey, I'm going to get a job. Yeah. Um, you know, I, and that's the part that you don't really touch about. I mean, I know you, you talk about it a little bit a little bit earlier, but I just feel like, you know, your story is different in that that you really um, built yourself up. You learned along the way and you continue mm -hmm. to learn. And um, one thing that I want to know is, did you have a, a mentor or a coach along the way or did oh, yeah. you just do this on your own? <clears throat> I mean, honestly, it I've been doing it now. I think a lot of marketers who you see around now who have been around in the marketing space nonstop from like 2006, 2007, they're certainly a lot more successful than I am now. Um, but that's because, you know, I, I made a lot of bad decisions, um, which kind of led to that period where I, I didn't have a lot of success. And I think coaching for me is not something that you should choose whether or not you want to do. It's something that you have to do. And I've had a lot of coaches and mentors in various capacities since literally the first day I ever Googled how to make money online. Um, and that can be as simple as, you know, just having a blogger that you follow religiously and, and see how they do things and how they talk about things and discuss their success and what they're doing. You know, for me, I consider that it's not like a coaching product that you purchase, but it's certainly someone who, you know, you're following and you're looking at what they're doing. And I kind of think that that lends to, you know, how you become successful and how you kind of learn from other people. It's not always down to products and courses that you buy. It's also down to your own research and your own way that you investigate things. So I've done a lot of that and I continue to do a lot of that. And I think by mixing up who it is that you follow and who it is that you really assess what it is that they're doing, I think you immediately become a better marketer just by doing that. But I've also paid for coaching. I've paid for marketing opportunities. I've paid for um, networking events, I think, are really underrated. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the conversations you can have and some of the people that you meet at, you know, a, a conference like Funnel Hacking Live, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many people there who, you know, you just had a bar and you're just grabbing a drink and you start talking to someone and you find out they're, you know, uh, uh, they run an incredibly successful website or a successful business and you can just learn so much just from picking their brain and you can share things with them. And, you know, I think there's been a few things that I've paid for, like I've outright paid to be mentored and coached by someone. And I think that those have been really valuable learning lessons when there's something that I can't specifically overcome or I can't, I can't wrap my head around and I need someone to show me how to do that. Um, I think coaching is something that everyone needs to go through because if you think about, you know, what you're trying to learn and what you're trying to do in your overall business, I think you need help along the way to get that done. And I think, looking at coaching and, and, and finding coaches who can help you is definitely something that's going to help you overcome those struggles. And it's very hard to do that by yourself because if you're trying to build a business based on what you know, you're very limited because you're in the process of learning all this while you're trying to build a business. So you're unaware of the things that you don't know. And it's the things that don't know that you don't know about that ultimately lead to failures in projects and failures in your overall journey to become an entrepreneur. And if you're new to being an entrepreneur, period, and you're new to being, you know, uh, an online marketer, you're new to the idea of, you know, running Facebook ads or Google ads or YouTube ads or whatever it might be, you know, the things that will trip you up and will lead to your your downfall, whether it's, you know, in this grander scale of you just quit entirely or or that makes that project fail are the things that you don't know. And having a coach or mentor to fill in those blanks and fill you into the things that you don't know um, is really eye opening, because once you become aware of everything that you don't know, uh, you start to see how much how far you have to go. And that helps lead you in towards, you know, filling in those gaps either by, you know, purchasing courses. That's one way to do it. Or, you know, by actually researching what other people are doing and kind of hacking what it is that they're doing to see why they're doing it. Um, so, yeah, I've had a lot of coaches along the way, both figuratively, like I've actually paid for them, um, as well as just kind of assessing really closely what other people are doing to see how I can learn from that. Um, but, yeah, I think you definitely need to have some kind of coaching or mentorship if you want to be successful with this, because to build a business, period, on your own while you're learning how to do it is is an immense challenge. Like, it, it's so difficult to do. And a lot of people don't talk about that, but it is very hard to do. So if you can get guidance from from a community or a group or a person that helps fill in those blanks for you, um, yeah, you'll, you'll grow a lot faster. I think it's mandatory that you have to have some kind of coaching in place to do that. Yeah, and one of the things for me, um, what I really loved 
about your journey and, and just in knowing you since 2018 was just to see how you you literally built a brand a brand <laughs> i mean i remember um and we'll talk about facebook masters program because i i still yeah. reference facebook masters program it's probably the best training out there uh hands down for facebook thank you um <laughs> not not only because i'm i'm serious i'm not saying it because you know i consider you to be a, a coach and a mentor too but it, it really is um you know the way the way you break things down um and make it so simple for people to understand and your teaching style is just i don't know what it is it's it's Number one, I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that always helps for sure. <laughs> I can understand what you're saying. And number two, it's just you provide so much value in what you do. And I think that's so important. Um, I watched you build this brand. Uh, and, you know, I remember um, making my logo and I kind of modeled it after your logo. Yeah. Um, I remember we using the about same that. colors <laughs> and everything. And I'm like, you know, copying the 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 animated uh, figure that you had I found one online uh, yeah, yeah. that kind of looked like me um, you know and I just kind of emulated it. and I think that's the way you become successful is you emulate uh, and you learn from successful people yeah and you've always been one of those types of people where you know I look up to in in, in terms of like wow he's really built this brand and provide constantly provides value and understands where his roots are and you know always wanting to give back now um to get a true understanding now of, of how you put together your day I, I think that's really yeah. important for people to understand because yeah i've gone through some of your uh, organizational uh, and goal setting exercises and i think it's important for people to understand that you know for, even for you to be on this call right now it's it's big you know it takes well, it takes a lot <laughs> out of your schedule yeah it's it's you know i mean at least uh, so it's when we're recording right now, I think we've been recording for like 19 minutes or something. And uh, like I had to be in here about uh, 45 minutes beforehand to like get my camera set up and the microphone set up. So yeah, organi organizing your day is super important. But I think if I were to look at like a kind of typical day for for me and, and how I put everything together, um, I, I have like two different types of days um, in my regular week. I try and take weekends off as much as I can because uh, I have a fiance and, and we live together and I don't want to, you know, I, I try and keep work and, and, and my home life separate as much as I can. So I try and focus on Monday to Friday. I have uh, specific types of days that I have. And the first type of day is uh, one, one thing that was on my, my bucket list for my entire life, which is to wake up without an alarm clock. I hate mm -hmm. alarm clocks. I hate them. So to wake up without an alarm, that's like my preferred day. And I'll do that maybe two, three days a week where I'll just wake up whenever I wake up and uh, my fiance and I will get up, we'll have breakfast, we'll watch a little bit of TV and then, you know, drink a cup of coffee and then I'll head to work and I'll get into my office here. I think you, it's a very important if you can to have an office that you go to or have somewhere that you go to accomplish your work stuff because I used to work from home and a lot of people talk about the great, the great benefit of working from home. Um, and there's a lot of benefits to that, but you can also come to resent it a lot because mm -hmm. you can't leave, right? You you wake up, you're at work, you go to bed, you're at work. And it's, it's you try and contain it as much as you can, but it's really difficult. So for me, one thing that's like skyrocketed my productivity is having somewhere to go. So the office that I'm in right now <clears throat> is about 15 minutes from my house. And I come in here every day, Monday to Friday, and if I'm doing that kind of slower day where I'm waking up on my own schedule, I'll come in, I'll get here about like between 9.30 and 10. And then uh, there's other entrepreneurs in this building. It's like a co-working space. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of other like uh, online companies and, and like there's lawyers here and stuff. And it's just good to have that social element because <clears throat> again, working from home, you don't see anybody and talk to anybody and it's very isolated. So I think that that's really important for me. And then through the day, like uh, I'll, I'll set aside, okay, here's how much time I have. Here's when I want to leave. So here's how many hours I've got uh, before I have to leave. What do I? What am I going to accomplish today um, before I leave? And then I'll look at the overall goal that I want to accomplish by the end of the day, and then I'll work backwards and see, okay, if I want to have this funnel built by the end of the day, okay, I need to make sure that I have this in place and this in place, and do I have my domain name? Does it point here? And you just kind of end up with a list of small tasks or small projects that you have to accomplish to hit that end goal for the end of the day and then once you have that list what i do is i organize that list based on 
you know, certain things have to be done before other things are done. So that kind of naturally lends itself to organize or organizing itself based on uh, accomplishments at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And then overall, at the start, at the end of every week, I'll take some time and I'll have a goal for the end of the week. So by Friday, here's what I want to accomplish. And then that kind of works back to, okay, to accomplish that bigger goal, I now have these individual daily goals I have to accomplish. So when I come in, I look at the daily goal and it's like, all right, here's now, here's all the little chunks I have to do to get that done. And then there's a bigger goal overall for the month and a bigger goal overall for the quarter and the year. Um, and I kind of have these goals set up. And then as you get closer to that goal, you start you know, coming to the finer projects that kind of help accomplish that. So that's like my first typical days that I'll sleep in as much as I can because I love sleep. Yeah. And uh, and they'll come in and, and just start working my way through everything. And then I'll take a break if I need to. Um, but for the most part, it's generally like I'll work straight through. I'll do like whatever it might be, seven, eight hours. I might take a couple coffee breaks. I might go for a walk outside. But for the most part, I'm here to work. Uh, and you have to distract, you have to turn off a lot of the distractions. Like I try and stay off Facebook as much as I can, except for checking ads and stuff. And some stuff will distract me. And but for the most part, I try and stay away from texting and talking to anybody uh, because I just want to focus on what I have to get done. And before I had an office space to come to, um, when I was kind of in that phase where I didn't want to do it from home anymore because I wasn't feeling very good about it, I would just go to a Starbucks and I would do, you know, three or four hours in a Starbucks. Um, and, or maybe I, if it was a nice day, I'd go and work outside. I'd go work in a park. Um, you know, I think it's just important to have somewhere to go to get that done. The other type of day that I have, uh, in my week is instead of sleeping in, I'll set an alarm for very early and I'll get up at about four, four thirty in the morning and, uh, pretty much just power through a cup of coffee, maybe something quick and then get to work. And I'm here in the office by about five thirty at the latest. And then that will be a 12 to 18 hour day where I power through and maybe I've got a big project I have to do or I have something that really has to get done. I'm up against a deadline. Those are like my power days where I'm like mm -hmm. going through hitting it hard. And then the next day, generally I'll reward myself with being able to sleep in a little bit and have a slightly slower day. So I kind of combine both as much as I can, because I find that if all the days were four o'clock in the morning and you're really doing that Gary V hustle and grind, mm -hmm. I feel like you burn yourself out really quickly. Um, you can do it for, a week to a month maybe, but after that you start really starting to feel it and you start to really feel negatively about what you're doing. But I think that kind of varying it up a little bit is, is, um, is really important. One thing that I do want to mention though, because I know a lot of people who are going to be watching this and who are on their own journey to become, uh, you know, whether an entrepreneur or an online market or whatever it might be, is that, you know, I have had nine to five job, you know, when I first became successful and I blew it, I, you know, I had to go get a job and I worked in a call center and I started to work my way from there. But I still wanted eventually, I decided I want to get back into doing this internet marketing stuff. And what I would do is I, at that point, I had a nine to five regular job in management and I would go into work two hours early and I would stay at work two hours late. And there's four hours every day that I could spend building my business. Mm -hmm. And I... Uh, work in Toronto, right? So the traffic around here is terrible. So by getting up early, I could avoid that traffic. And by staying late, I would also avoid some of that rush hour traffic. <clears throat> so I'm not spending, you know, unproductive time in my car where I'm just sitting there waiting in traffic. I'm getting up earlier to come in and I'm using that time instead of sitting in traffic to be productive and to help build my business. Uh, and by doing that for, you know, a period of about six months, I was at a point where I felt comfortable that I can quit entirely and just focus on doing the online thing and and it worked out yeah and you know what i gotta i gotta tell you i've i've sat in the that traffic that you're talking about <laughs> yeah man, in a I former do. life in a former life i i did go to canada a lot i'm not going to mention the company name but i did go there a lot and yes i can attest to that traffic it is horrible <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is brutal and you'll be sitting there if you're trying to get across the city you could be sitting there like two two and a half three hours depending on the time of day and like that's just unproductive time if you just yep. get up earlier and go where you need to go you can still have that three hours but you're not sitting in traffic now you're sitting in your, you know you're in a focused zone and depending on where you work you know there's probably nobody there that's not obviously applicable for everybody you know people have kids and families and they have a routine and a schedule but if you want to make something work you'll find a way to make it work you know you can make yours you've got 24 hours in a day same as everybody else whether that yeah. means you go to bed later or you get up earlier you have to find a way to make a way to make it work if you want to do this Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And so everyone, the key here is in him talking about his day, did he ever talk about lying on a beach with, <laughs> with sipping a cocktail while money's coming in? No, no, he did not. And so that's like the big point that, 
you know, I, I want people to realize and, and listening to your story is that you work hard. You work your yeah. butt off to get to where <laughs> you're at and you still work your butt off every yes. single day. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's it's not, you know, it just kind of pains me to see that kind of marketing that's out there, um, you know, that kind of sucks people in because, hey, I probably got sucked in because of something like that. But, you know, I realized real quick that, that that's not the case. And there are some people out there that still chase after that and um you know to well, that's, see... that, that's marketing right i mean yeah. you, you're not you never no one's ever going to opt in to get your ebook or buy your course if you're like hey i'm going to teach you how to work really really hard you know it's it's much easier to sell the end goal or i wouldn't even say the end goal because my personal end goal is not to sit on a beach um my end goal is just to be happy with what i create and to help other people be happy with with what they create mm -hmm. and to to make to make the best quality stuff that I can do. Now, I'm lucky in the sense that, you know, my business um, can be run off a laptop. I can go to the Bahamas tomorrow if I want and I could go work from a beach. I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. I like the routine that I have. It work it's what works for me. But if I wanted to sell people on, you know, becoming an online marketer, it's not going to work if I'm just yeah. talking about the hard work that's involved in this and that. I think you have to quickly tell people about that part after you've kind of talked about the beaches and the the parties and the private flights and everything like that you know that that's what interests people but they have to understand that there's also the hard work to get there you're seeing a very uh you're seeing a snapshot of the life of a successful marketer it's not like that every day and even the people who who you do see on the beach all the time their business isn't like that every day some of the hardest working entrepreneurs that i've seen in the online space you know they have the flashy ads where they're in helicopters and they've got like you know the supreme money guns and stuff those guys work hard mm -hmm. and i've seen it firsthand like the the amount of thought and and determination you have to have to keep that kind of lifestyle going anyway is is um it's not something that gets talked about a lot but Man, it's hard. It's it's the hardest thing you'll do is is trying to build a successful online business, especially in this kind of affiliate marketing space, because it's so competitive and it's so hard to find what's truthful and what's not. And some people are just out there to make a buck. Um, it's hard work. But you know what? Hard work really does pay off. And I think hard work in this industry pays off more than most others that I found, because I know people mm -hmm. who have been in their industries, you know, outside of, you know, outside of entrepreneurship, they've just been nine to fivers for you know, 15 to 20 years, and they still have the same position, you know, maybe they're hoping to get that management role that might be coming up. Um, but if you put 20 years as much hard work into building an online business, you would have a million dollar per month business, mm -hmm. without question. Um, a lot of people just kind of assume that because it's online, it's easier. And it's it's not easier. It's just very different. And the, the mm -hmm. perks significantly outweigh the perks of a traditional nine to five career, even if you're making 150 200 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I, you know, I've, I'm, I'm working towards my goal as well. Um, so what, are, what are some of the big misconceptions of, um, you know, making money online that beginners just struggle with, right? I mean, we, we, we touched upon one, which is, you know, that whole thinking that it's easy. Yeah. Um, what are some of the others that you've noticed? Cause you've been coaching a lot of students. Yeah, I think there's some probably the biggest, I don't even know how I'd class it, but as far as like misconceptions go, I think a lot of people when they are, uh, when they buy courses and products and they, they really buy them with the strongest intention of learning how to, for example, build a funnel or how to set up a Facebook ad. And you can find a course or a program or a mentor to teach you how to do it, you know, like what to click and how to build it and stuff like that. But so many uh, marketers that I've worked with, so many students that I've worked with, they neglect some of the stuff that is more important than learning how to build a funnel or learning how to, uh, you know, design a YouTube channel. You know, some skills that I use and some tools that I use are not marketing tools. They're not, they're not, you know, online business tools, you know, like stuff that I use every day, like Photoshop. You know, I think if you want to be a successful marketer, so much of what you do online is visual, right? Mm -hmm. um, you'll have videos that you have to do, but also like your web pages, the pages of your funnel, how your products look, the logos that you use. Um, you have to be competent and understanding of some elements of design. You don't have to be a graphic designer, but you have to be open to learning it. 
Um, and that's one thing that I think a lot of people just overlook, you know, they think, oh, because I have click funnels or because I have convertry or because I have a WordPress blog, you know, I'm a marketer and I can't see why I'm not making any money. And it's like, well, because your content sucks because you can't write, you know, how, how, how did you learn to write? And this, I didn't bother to learn. Well, you got to learn that before you can learn how to put together a funnel, you know, like your copy on this page is terrible. You know, you have uh, your headline. It doesn't make any sense. There's so many uh, small things like they, they will learn the outside of the business, like the outward facing stuff, like mm -hmm. how things actually work on the surface. But so much of what makes those funnels work or those businesses work is what happens underneath. And that's where all the main learning stuff is. So the biggest misconception is understanding or a lack of understanding about everything that happens on underneath the surface, like understanding Photoshop when it comes to video, right? Like, um, you have to have, if you want to be in internet marketing at all, you have to be comfortable on video. You have to do that now. Uh, it's 2020. Everyone should be at least interested in learning how to get onto video and how to be comfortable with it. And you have to learn some basics, just very, very basic stuff about video editing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if we do a, a big interview here that we were talking for like three hours and you want to cut stuff out of it, you have to learn, you have to know how to do that. Um, and then to a bigger extent, you have to learn uh, you know, what a brand is and how you want to be perceived. Like there's so much stuff that happens underneath what you see on the surface. If you were to go and like, go through one of my funnels and look at what I'm doing, I've had so many, uh, people buy my products and literally try and copy the funnels and copy some of the, the actual copy on the page and copy the videos out of my courses. And they try and go and sell them and they don't sell that many. They'll sell like mm -hmm. 10 or 20 or 50 of it. And, Eventually I'll shut them down anyway, but they don't sell as many. And they're like, well, I don't understand why I can't sell this. Or I've seen other people come with, you know, that they're obviously just completely copying uh, funnels from like Frank Kern or Anik Singhal or whomever. And it's just, how come this doesn't work? It's like, because what you have looks kind of like what they're doing, but it's nothing like what they're doing because mm -hmm. you're missing all the, the undersurface stuff. So I think the biggest misconception is just uh, understanding that, there's so much that goes into everything that you see and you really have to get good at asking yourself why, like, I'm sure you could go onto your Facebook newsfeed right now and you'd see an ad from probably an ad from me because I'm running a, a, a lot of Facebook campaigns right now, but you might see an ad from me or, you know, Russell Brunson or Frank Kern or whomever. And a lot of people just kind of look and go, Oh, that's a cool ad. But you have to go further than that. You have to ask, okay, why is, why, why am I an ad from Frank Kern? And, what is this ad trying to get me to do? And why is he trying to use this ad to get me to do that? Mm -hmm. And why does it look this way? And why does he use those words? And if I click on the link and I look at the landing page, there's no images on this page. It's just white text, or maybe there's a video and he's not even in the video. It's just white text with black words. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can do that. You have to question everything um, because so much of what will help you be successful is not just knowing what to click and how to click. It's understanding the reasons that you're clicking what you're clicking and you're building what you're building and you're trying to model what someone else is doing. Just simply doing it isn't enough. A copycat won't make it. You have to understand why certain things are in place and why they exist like they do and what that's why they work. It's very little to do with just copying the overall outline of a funnel. It's, it's very specific reasons that make that funnel work for that individual. Yeah. And I, and I think you touched on a point where, you know, first of all, video, yeah, Jake, people don't know this, but JK is the one who got me into video yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. I remember you said, hey, man, you better you better get on video. And it's something that if you, you know, uh, pick up the Facebook master's program course, that's there's a module in there where where uh, JK talks about the importance of video. And yeah. um, but, you know, also, too, I, I think what I really admire about you is that you are a student of this industry. And like you said, it's not necessarily the products and the outside yeah. and you have all that, but like, I know you as a master copywriter, your copy is just awesome. Um, you can build funnels like, like no <laughs> one, I mean, it's just, but those are the things that, that, that lead to the success yeah. of your brand, um, that people don't realize that people don't see, they see the, the outside. But again, like you said, they don't see everything else that goes into putting that together. Now, in, you know, this, this is a very competitive, ultra competitive, I should say, um, industry to be in or niche yeah, to be yeah. in. And, you know, I'm, I'm into this kind of like this red ocean, blue ocean. I don't know if you, you probably yeah. know what the red ocean. So what makes you different? Like, how did you, how did you kind of carve out your unique niche in this kind of muddied and, and 
bloodied, <laughs> bloodied ocean? I think um, that's a good question, actually. I, I did things wrong, technically, um, but only because I, I had tried before. So when I was originally, like, I look at my, my career in two blocks. The first period where I messed up and I had to go get a job, and that was on me, and I know exactly why that happened. And I look at where I am now and, you know, what I was doing before, I wasn't trying to be a brand. I wasn't trying to, I, I was never even really there. It was, you know, a company, it was a brand, it was mm -hmm. uh, a business, you know, like there, we had salespeople on the phone who would talk to our customers. And I was just, uh, you know, kind of the strategy person who was organizing all that. Now, when I've decided to, to kind of get into this now, I saw that there was an opportunity with people coming and, you know, putting together products and being on video. And like, it was kind of at that time when, that was people were trying to copy what the biggest brands were doing. Like, well, I, again, I always reference Frank Kern because he's mm -hmm. someone who I look up to a lot in, in terms of how he's built his business. I think a lot of people started to look at that, that model and kind of try and find ways to get that to work for them. And when I started to kind of toy with that idea, it, I kind of decided, all right, let me go down this road and let me educate people because I have a lot of knowledge to share and mm -hmm. I have a background in educating people and helping them, um, you know, learn things. And I thought, well, this is, I'm, I'm probably pretty suited to this same, the same business model. So I started to kind of get involved with that. And as I started to kind of see where that would go, there was a lot of, um, there's a lot of reading that I did about how to build this type of, I don't want to say influencer business, but how to be like your own brand, how to be the face mm -hmm. of your own brand. And a lot of it talked about, you know, understanding your customers and, I was at a point where this was kind of new to me and that, you know, I'm going to be like the face of my own brand, you know, JK mm -hmm. Dattle is going to be me. That's going to be the brand that people recognize. And that was new to me. And I didn't really know who my customers were going to be. So I decided, all right, I'm just going to create content that I think would help a specific person. I had a, a rough idea of a specific person in mind. And I thought, let's see if people buy this stuff and let's see who really, who it resonates with and who, who, who kind of feels like they're getting the most value out of it. And then once I put together a couple of products and a couple of videos and stuff like that, I began to see it was the same kind of person who was really finding that my stuff was helping them. They were learning more. There was something different about my content and my products that were, that were helping them compared to other people that they were buying from in the same space, like that warrior plus JV zoo space. Mm -hmm. And the people who would end up talking to me like yourself or a lot of other people who were like, this is really helpful. Like there's something different about how you put things together and the way you explain things is really different. And I thought, okay, this is my customer. You know, my customer is someone who is not necessarily right at the beginning of their adventure or their journey to becoming a successful marketer. You know, I'm not targeting the people who are typing, make money online. That's not my customer. Mm -hmm. My customer is someone who's done that, who's tried a few things and is at the point where they're getting frustrated and they want to really see success, but they don't know how to do it. So I will create, you know, lower price products that help them get those quick wins. And I think that that helps kind of win people into my sphere of influence. So if you're kind of using that red ocean, blue ocean, I always forget the colors. Is it, I'm trying to pull people from the red ocean or the Correct. blue ocean. I can't remember which way it is, but anyway. Yeah, the red ocean is just bloody. Yeah, the exactly. Bloodied water. Yeah. yeah, so I'm trying to pull people from there to bring them into my sphere of influence, into my ocean. Um, because I'm doing the same thing that other people are doing, but I'm doing it in a way that I think helps other people because they can see what I'm doing. Because my philosophy is I'm going to teach you how to do X, Y, and Z, but I want to teach you why I'm doing X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. that's where the learning happens. The learning doesn't happen. I mentioned this before. The learning doesn't happen by clicking the button and, and following and watching over the shoulder. That's how you learn a skill. Mm -hmm. It's not even really how you learn a skill. That's how you learn to copy what someone else is doing, but it doesn't help you understand the cert, you know, below, below the surface. And that's where your business is built. So I think just by kind of putting that product together and identifying who really liked my product and who opens my emails and who's repeat buying my products, it helped me see that that's the kind of person I want to work with. So now everything I do in my business is tailor made around that customer, which is my avatar essentially of who I build my products for and who I make videos for and who I come and talk to because, you know, that's, that's who I really want to work with. And it turns out there's a lot of those people. And I didn't know if there was going to be a lot of those people. And it just worked out that there was. I think there's a lot of people who want to build an online business, but they're just tired of all the crap that is out there. And it's stuff that doesn't help and they get frustrated. And I just want to capture those people before they get to the point where they're ready to quit. And I want to show them like, you can do this, but you just have to have the right 
the right instruction on how to do it and understand why you're doing it. And, I, I, and as I kind of remind myself of who I'm building products for and who I'm trying to help, it helps guide my business further and further. And it gives me this brand within this, you know, relatively small community mm -hmm. um, of the internet marketing space. And that's what has kind of worked for me. Yeah. And I got to, I mean, I am your avatar. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, I am. I, mean, I yeah. am like, take a look at me, folks. I am. I am JK's avatar mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so let's let's kind of shift to the products that you have. Um, yeah. I've practically purchased everything that, yeah, that you've you sold have, yeah. just because I, I just because you know um, we we talk about red hot, right? Red hot. Um, but you know, I, I really love the products. Um, you know, let's talk about some of the products that you have right now and what you are currently working on. And kind of give people an idea of of what they can learn from you so uh, i've got a couple of products that are out there already and i don't even really put a whole lot of advertising into them anymore not because i don't think that they're good products but i found that by by kind of following the the launch model that is really popular in where my customer lives right um mm -hmm. who consume a lot of products in that lower $27, $17 range. There's a lot of customers in that space. And I think I can find my customers there because they're the ones who become disillusioned with the lesser quality products that are out there. Um, so what I originally started doing was to kind of generate a brand in that space. I would create products only like maybe three or four per year because I'd spend a lot of time in testing and making sure that they worked. And so there's products out there like the FB Masters program, which you mentioned before, which was a product there where I was like, I have a lot of information to share about Facebook ads because any courses I see out there that are in that price range for that customer are crap. Um, mm -hmm. They don't cover, you know, again, the big why you're doing Facebook ads. So I said, I'm going to make a product that should cost a thousand dollars and it does now. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm going to release it for really, really, really low cost so that I can expose my knowledge and my interests and my ability to help people to as many of those avatars that I can find or as many that are out there. So I did that with the FB Masters program. I've done that with a product as well called Funnelize. And by doing that, the only negative is by always focusing on the next product or always focusing on what the next project is going to be that I can use to bring in more avatars to my sphere of influence, uh, you run into a problem where you're not actually growing. You're just doing the same thing over and over and right. over again. You are growing a little bit in that, uh, you know, physically your list of customers and physically your mailing list and how many people follow you. That does grow, but you're only growing your customer base. You're not growing your brand. Yeah, I don't want to be, you know, when you're when you're building out product after product after product and you're trying to use that as a way to really grow your business, I think you run into a problem where your business doesn't have a product because you keep producing new ones all the time. And I think that that's a real problem because if you're trying to build your brand, you can't have, okay, well, what does this JK Dowdle guy do? And then you look and it's like, okay, well, he's got like 65 different products, like pick one and become really, really good at it. So I decided a uh, bit midway through last year that I wanted to have one product and I wanted, I've got like a couple of other ideas of, of, different things that I want to do. I wouldn't necessarily call them products, but uh, I have one thing that I really want to focus on for 2020. And that is uh, Inboxer, which is mm -hmm. an email marketing training program that is there to teach people a very fundamental skill that I think is often overlooked in a lot of other training and development programs. And that is, uh, you know, when someone, if you're running, let's say if, if you're doing a funnel and you're collecting email addresses, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of courses talk about here's how you get the email, but they don't focus so much on what you do with that. So I wanted to put together a program that taught people, here's how you actually build up relationships with people through the inbox. Because when you learn how to do that and you can build up relationship and trust and you're speaking one to potentially thousands or hundreds or even just you know 10 people, if you can build up a relationship by doing that, and you're able to do that effectively and you can repeat that, um, that's kind of the secret sauce I have found. Uh, if you're able to do that in an effective way, in a way that actually provides content to people, helps people accomplish their goals, lets them understand your way of, of doing business, I think it's such a key skill. You know, uh, people can learn from everyone else how to do everything else. Mm -hmm. They can learn from face. They can learn about Facebook ads and how to do that from me, or they can learn about it from someone else. They can learn about how to design a funnel from someone else. But I want it to be 
the authority for my avatar uh, when it comes to how to actually you know, use email uh, to, to get sales and to grow your business from a financial standpoint. So that's been a big focus for me. And we did a soft launch at the end of 2019, which went really, really well. Um, and I also wanted to practice what I preach. So a big part of what I talk about inside Inboxer is that, you know, there's very little paid ads that you need to run in your business if you learn email marketing. And I learned that by actually assessing one of my funnels that was performing really, really well. Uh, and I was paying $30 to make a sale uh, of a $37 product. Now, that's not a great return on investment, but... Uh, the point of that specific funnel wasn't to make money. It was just to bring customers into my email marketing. Mm -hmm. And then by removing a bunch of paid ads and just focusing on the email marketing, we're able to increase ROI by about over 450% by wow. cutting out a whole bunch of paid ads. So I decided that when it comes to the launch of Inboxer, um, I wanted to do the same thing. So we have very few ads that actually run for Inboxer. We have a couple of ads that lead into the top of the funnel. And then what we do is we just rely purely on email marketing to actually go and get that sale. So um, there's a couple of ads that might run to get people to know what Inboxer is. But after that, it's purely email marketing. And every customer we've gotten from Inboxer from that soft launch and every customer that we're going to get from Inboxer going forward is going to be purely down to email. They will purchase that product based on how I educate them in email. And also um, they will make their decision. They will go to the page by their own decision when they're ready and they will purchase based on how I can educate them and empower them through email. Um, and so Inboxer is kind of its own case study in and of itself as to why email marketing works. And email marketing is something I'm really, really passionate about. And it's easy for me to come up with content. So that's what I wanted my business to be in 2020 and going forward. And I want to get it to the point where we've got um, uh, 10,000 active members in the Inboxer program. And there's people who are asking questions about, okay, here's an email series that I want to write. How can I improve this? And I really want it to be a dynamic, engaged organization that is focused on one thing, and that is to make you a better email marketer. Because even if you have a crap funnel and you don't know what products you want to sell, it doesn't matter. If, you, if you're good at email marketing, you can have no website at all. You can have a one-page website with no products to sell. Uh, if you're able to bring email leads into your business and form relationships with them, you've already built a business. And by learning how to do that, it's a difficult skill to learn, but by learning how to do that, I think you empower yourself with one of the best skills you can have. So for me, Inboxer is like my primary focus. Um, there's a couple of other projects that I'm really interested in doing because I'm big into case studies. I like to prove that what I do works. So another thing that I'm working on right now, which is really, really exciting, and I've been working on this or planning it out because it's a huge project. Uh, I've been doing this for at least 120 days, so about four months of trying to plan out how I'm going to do this. And it's called the ONE program, O-N-E, um, which is basically newbie to expert, online newbie to expert. And what, what I want to do is I want to have one person, um, which is why it's called the ONE program, actually come in and uh, become my, I don't want to say student, but what I want to do is I'm actually going to create my own identity online. Uh, I'm going to not use affiliates. I'm not going to use my brand. I want to be completely hidden. And I want to do a case study of starting off with zero, zero email list, no brand, no Facebook page, no website, nothing at all. Uh, and I want to build that up to $10,000 in sales. And the reason that I want one person is because at the end of that period, once I hit $10,000 in sales, I want someone to take over that business and continue running it. The reason that I need one person is that Again, I mentioned this earlier, you know, video is so important and the visuals of how you're building a brand are so important. I can't be the one on video because, you know, people will know who I am. So people will start right. to recognize me. So I want one person to do the videos and to be like the face of this. So I will be doing like the funnels and I'll be doing the lead capture and I'll be writing the emails. And I'm going to document everything along the way. Like, here's why I'm building this funnel and here's why it's so important. And, and it's basically mm -hmm. going to turn into this giant case study. And every month I'm planning to release uh, basically what we did that month as a part of the one program and show here's how much progress we've made. Here's what we did to make that progress. And anytime that this person appears in videos or whatever, nobody will know that they are the one. Nobody will know who this person is. This person is just going to become uh, essentially a super affiliate uh, just by being the face of this organization. 
and I'll be doing everything in the background. And once we get to that point, that person will then be able to take over the business right there. Um, and I've had, I've, I've mentioned it in my 10X Mastermind group on Facebook, and I've also mentioned it, I've emailed out to my subscribers that this is what I wanna do. And the amount of people who are just clamoring to get this opportunity is really, really exciting. Like it really makes me happy that a lot of people can see that there's a lot of value in this and they're excited for me to help them do this because it's, it's not a coaching program, it's I'm gonna build you a business program mm -hmm. and you're gonna learn a lot along the way. And there's only one person I wanna do it for um, and there's so many people who are interested in it. I, I don't know exactly how I'm going to, I'm still in the process of, of, uh, there's just been so much more interest in this than I ever thought there would be. And people who are not even on my email list, people who are, I've never even heard of before, who have never purchased my products are like, I want to do this. Like, what is this? How much is this going to cost and stuff? And there is going to be a price attached to it. Uh, just because I want to make sure that you know, if I did this for free, as it were, and I only picked one person, that person wouldn't have much motivation to do this in the beginning. Because when it's really hard in the beginning and you get like, you know, two likes and you're celebrating your Facebook post because you got two likes, um, I think I'll, the person who's going to actually do this with me the whole time, they can't back out. They mm -hmm. have to stick with it the whole way because three months or four months into this, if they say, no, I'm not doing this anymore, I have to start all over again. So the only way I feel that someone is really going to be that committed is if they have some skin in the game. Um, and I think the easiest way for them to do that is to, uh, to, to pay for the privilege to get it. Uh, and I've debated with that because it seems like I don't want to, I didn't necessarily want to charge people for it. I wanted to, I want this to be like one thing. Cause, cause at the end of the day, the content that I'm producing, you know, that's, that's what I'm doing this for is to have that case study, but I need so I need a partner on this. Who's really going to be invested in doing it. And like I said, I think if, if it was just free, free things, people don't really have respect for. Um, if you've got skin in the game, you're more likely to take it seriously and you're more likely to follow through. Like when I say, I need you to do this video by Friday. And if they're like, eh, I can't do that. And it's like, eh, whatever. This is probably never going to work anyway. And you've spent two months with me already. I'm up the creek without a paddle. So I'm not sure. I haven't determined the price yet. It's going to be way less than 10 grand. Um, there's going to be a significant ROI because all the commissions, all the sales are going to that person. Right. right. So when I hit the $10,000, the very first dollar we make as a commission or as a sale, it's going to the one, whoever the one person is. So they're going to be making money relatively quickly because uh, I know what to do in order to get them to make some cash. But I need them to I need them to be involved with it. They really, really need to be involved with it. So I think by cutting down on those applications, because I've had a lot of people interested in it, I think. Um, just by putting up that that wall to say, you know what, the only people who are interested in this or who can do this are people who are really to to invest in it, then that's fine. But they don't need to do like Facebook ads or anything like that. I'm going to do that for them. I've already worked out a tiny budget of how much I'm going to spend because I want people to ultimately follow what I'm doing and emulate it themselves. And if I'm spending $10,000 a month on Facebook ads, that's not really realistic. So I'm going to set myself a very strict budget. And there's also going to be every month I'm going to explain here's how much I spent on uh, Facebook ads, you know, I spent $65 per month out of my $200 budget on Facebook ads. And, you know, I have this bill for click funnels, that's $97 per month, that's eating into my budget. So I'm gonna work with the budget and, and I'm really gonna do this from a complete beginner's perspective and show in that age old question, if you had everything taken away from you today, how would you build up a business? And that's essentially what the case study is. Yeah, it's, um, it's amazing. And, you know, I don't know if anybody like I've heard Russell Brunson talk about this. Um, yeah. I saw one of his videos, <clears throat> but to actually be a part of it. And I totally agree with you that people have to have this, uh, have skin in the game because I've, I've done consulting with, with people. And, um, you know, unless you're, unless that person is putting that skin in the game in the, in the terms of, of financial skin, yeah. you know, it's, it's very hard to get them to do things. <laughs> yeah, and, it, is. it is, you know, I, I totally agree with you. And especially your time, your time is so valuable as is everyone's, but yours especially. Yeah. So, you know, I, t I totally agree with that. Um, now, you know, are there, you know, I, I guess, is there like kind of like a timeline when you're going to choose this person? So there's uh, certain things that I have to put in place before I can really get into like a full application process because there's going to be like interviews with people. Um, they're going to have to get on camera with me. They have to, you know, they, they have to really... They're going to they're going to have to jump through a few hoops, basically. But I, I need that because, like I said, it's a partnership at the end of the day. And I need that person to be committed with me till the very end. Um, and there's going to be hiccups along the way. I can't even give, honestly, an ETA of when this business is going to be built. It'll take, you know, a year, roughly. Um, it could be less than that. It could be slightly longer than that. There's always problems and hiccups that come along the way. So 
Um, there's certain things that I need to put in place before I can open up the application process, but it's going to be soon. I'll put it that way. It's going to be very soon. I'd say within the next uh, 30 days, 30 to 45 days, there will definitely be the application process will be open. Um, and then once that happens, I mean, we have to create new affiliate accounts. We have to create everything has to be completely from scratch. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to see how that kind of works and comes together, um, considering the overwhelming amount of interest I've had in people who obviously want to do this um, and people who want to see the content, even people who don't want to be the one, but they just want to see the content as to how I'm going to do this. Uh, I really want to make sure that this is correctly done because I actually had this idea over the holidays um, back in uh, Thanksgiving in Canada, which is back in October. And I was like, you know, this would be a great idea. Like this is, mm -hmm. but it has to be planned out effectively. And if I don't plan it correctly, it's going to fall apart and I have to make sure that it's done correctly. So uh, I'm not going to rush it, but once it gets started, it's going to be interesting. And the great, the really interesting thing is that, you know, when this first starts up, no one is going to know who this person is. They're going to have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. They cannot reveal who they are. Mm -hmm. As far as it looks to everyone else, this is just going to be, you know, this will be another up and comer. They won't know that I'm behind it. And as the products come out and get released, you know, this person, whoever they are, their, their picture is not going to be included. There's not going to be any links to their video page. This is all going to be incognito. You're just going to see from my perspective, building this in the background, here's what I'm doing. Here's how everything looks. You won't see any domain names. You won't see anything else. This is going to be completely clandestine. And eventually, uh, when we hit that $10,000 mark and that, that one person has got their $10,000 in sales and commissions, um, they'll just take over the business. And if they want at that point, they can reveal it. If they don't want to, they don't have to. Um, but my case study will be done at that point and it's up to them what they want to do with it. But even when the case studies are coming out, like every month and there's new content, what we accomplished this month in the one program, uh, it has to be, you know, to keep it legitimate as a real experiment, it has to be kept all very, very secret. So mm -hmm. no one will know anything. And, and literally when I choose someone, I'm not even going to announce, actually I'll probably announce that I've chosen someone, but that'll be it. There won't be any updates about who this person is or when they start or anything like that. It'll just be, here we go. And then you'll see eventually there'll be content that comes out and says, you know, part one of the, um, the one program is now available. And uh, I really think that there's, you know, when I look for ideas in terms of how to come up with stuff, I always think to outside of the internet marketing space, because sometimes if we're only focusing in our community and we're only focusing in our industry to come up with ideas for stuff, it can be very limiting. And that's how you end up having a lot of products and a lot of stuff that's just kind of the same. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are repeated. So I actually got this idea from Game of Thrones, which is kind of weird, but <laughs> um, I wanted to create an episodic product. Instead of just having one product that came out once, I wanted to have uh, episodes that come mm -hmm. out like basically once a month. And people can be like, okay, I'm going to purchase this episode or maybe not. Maybe you don't want to learn, you know, this week we focused on building a social media account. So maybe you're not interested in social media. You can skip that episode, but maybe you want to look back at the next episode. The next episode might mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, email marketing or something. So I, wa I wanted to create episodic content that is specifically around one season of the one. And then, you know, the idea will be, uh, we'll do another season of the one and that will be slightly different. Maybe we'll go and build like a, an e-commerce store. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll go and build this or that. And, and I just think it's a really fun way of, of, you know, answering that question because it gets, that's probably the number one question I get period is if you had everything taken away, what would you do to start over? And this is what I would do. I will now be able to point people and say, watch this, or, you know, take a look at this, buy this. And that's what I would do. And I think that that's going to be really, really good content. I'm really, really looking forward to that. I, first of all, brilliant. I also <laughs> see, <laughs> yeah, I almost made you speak. Just spit take there. A little bit. Br brilliant. Um, I, I see Netflix series in your future uh, <laughs> with that one. So start getting that, that agreement put together. Um, so you're getting flooded probably by a boatload of people wanting to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, is it still open? Can people still apply for it? And if so, how do they do it? So uh, the application hasn't actually started yet. Um, the only information I've released about it is just to 
uh, my email list because you have to treat your email list as priority number one because that's mm -hmm. the start of your business. So I wanted people to know that this is something that I am going to do uh, just so that when eventually the application does open up, it's not like, what is this? I've never heard of this. What is this? I want to kind of build up that anticipation, right? So before I'll go back to that Game of Thrones example, before the new season of Game of Thrones starts, well, actually it's over now, but before the next season started, you'd have trailers come up, right? And you'd have that hype would start to build. And I think, you know, this is at the end of the day, this is a product launch for me. It's just a single copy of a product that's being launched, but it has to have an appropriate buildup. And now that people are aware of it and I have, you know, emails every day coming into me saying, I want to do this. How do I do this? What, what's involved? Um, it's building up that anticipation so that when more information is released, which will be soon, um, people will not be taken aback. They'll be like, okay, I want to learn more about this. And they kind of mm -hmm. will get to a point where they are um, hyping themselves up about it. And so that it becomes more interesting. So the applications aren't open yet. Uh, if you do want to know more information and you want to be kept in the loop about that, best thing to do would be to join the 10X Mastermind group on Facebook, which is my free Facebook group. And any ideas that I have, I just post in there. And honestly, I'll just think of an idea and I'll post it and I'll see if people like it. Um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of my second big project for this year. The first big project is Inboxer. And then the third project that I'm working on, which I'll go into really quickly is um, I want to do two day retreats um, for marketers. So what I want to do is um, I, I find that a lot of marketing meetups, as if they're not big conferences, like a big conference, like Funnel Hacking Live, that's probably the biggest marketing conference or one of the biggest that happens. Your ticket for that is $997. <clears throat> the hotel, if you want to stay in the hotel, if you're going to be there for the whole time is like another $1,200. And then depending on where you're coming from, your flight on top of that can be another $500 to $1,000. And to go to this conference can end up costing you like, you know, three to four to $5,000, depending on where you're standing, where you're staying and stuff. And there's a lot of speakers there and, and there's a lot of networking and stuff that happens. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a, um, originally I actually posted this again in the 10X Mastermind group in Facebook. Right. I do a thing once or twice a year where I will uh, pack a bag and I will go and stay either in a hotel or in an Airbnb and I will cut myself off completely from the world. And I will just focus on creating ideas, writing ideas down. I very often will stay off social media completely. Um, and it's just about thinking and planning and reflecting on what I'm doing and where I'm going. So that's always like a huge thing for me every year to go and do that. And I wanted to invite people to kind of come and have that own their own little moment. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted us to all kind of live in a house for like a week or something and just kind of push each other to come up with new ideas. And some people were interested in that, but it was quite expensive because, you know, to have eight to 10 people living in a house, um, you know, to, to rent the house alone is going to be like ten to $15,000. So mm -hmm. I decided that I liked the idea and a lot of people did like the idea, but the cost was kind of prohibitive. So the other project that I'm working on, which is also really, really exciting, is I want to do a two-day retreat on a Saturday, Sunday. Um, and I want to get basically that same idea, that big house put together and people will come and that mastermind meetup will be specific to one topic. And I'm going to work with five or six people on educating them on how to become better at that topic, whether it's, you know, for example, uh, retargeting with Facebook ads or email mm -hmm. marketing or building a funnel or capturing leads or whatever it might be. And we're going to do that for really, really, really low cost. Like I want to get this as cheap as possible. I don't even want to make money on this. Mm -hmm. I just want this to be like a branding tool to help people and show them that working with me is like what I, I just want. I want people to understand that I can help them. And I want to see them get results. So I'm trying to get that as low as possible. Right now, uh, we're trying to figure it for about $497 per person. And that's your accommodation included. Wow. And it would be two days over Saturday and Sunday. We're looking at doing it in California. And we want people to just come for two days. And we're, we've got, we got workbooks planned out that we want to give them. We've got cheat sheets for them to take away. We're going to have actual projects to work on over those two days. Um, set deadlines. Like it's going to be a two day retreat where we're going to focus right there. Let's get your problem sorted out. Let's get you over the hump that you're having with email marketing or Facebook ads or whatever the topic is. And then do one of those every potentially 60 days and just have five to six people, whoever wants to come first, come first, serve. Um, and just, you know, there's your accommodation. Uh, we're trying to get it close to the airport. So you can literally just Uber over to like the marketing house and uh you know take part in the retreat and then either fly home or drive home depending on where you live so we want to make it really 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 cost effective it's not like a big ticket item like a lot of people look at that as well you should charge i talked to a couple of people about it they're like you should charge like you know five thousand dollars for that it's like that's missing the point the point is this is for everyone and we're trying to make it as cheap as possible you know if i can make 
you know, 500 bucks out of it myself to kind of cover my ticket for my flight and um, probably a rental car, then I'm happy with that. I'm not doing this to make a lot of money. I'm not doing this to be a big ticket item. I just think that this would be really, really helpful to get people to that next stage of their business. And I was kind of, honestly, I was inspired by that by Philip Barman, who you had on the show before, who, you know, has flown across, he's actually flying, or I don't even know where he is now. He's in like New Zealand or something. New Zealand, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's meeting up with people. And I know that you met up with him as well. And, you know, you're part of his group. And I, I was so inspired by that. I was like, you know what, that's, that's, that's what we should be doing. If you're a marketer and you're an educator and you want people to succeed, you got to prove that you want them to succeed. And I think that this is a great way to do that. And I also kind of like the idea of one-upping Philip just a little bit <laughs> by, <laughs> by, uh, by putting together that retreat. And I think having people come to me would be a little bit easier <laughs> than me flying all over the world. So that's, that's what I'm planning. That's what I want to do. And we're going to do some in different places in the world. The first one's going to be in California. Second one might be on the East coast of the States. And then maybe we'll do um, a couple of others. And eventually I want to have people actually, if, if, if it goes well and there's a lot of interest for it, I think I might actually have them come to my house and kind of do the same thing as well. So just kind of have like a retreat, a focused retreat on let's get some shit done. And, and when you leave on Monday morning or Sunday night and you take your flight and you're reflecting back and you're thinking, I learned more from that than I have from any course or any webinar or any whatever that I've learned. I want people to leave with that feeling. Right, right. California. Hey, Northern yes, California is a great, exactly. <laughs> Northern California, specifically Sacramento is a really great place to start. <laughs> yeah, we're looking at, honestly, we're looking at um, a couple places. LA is too expensive mm -hmm. for the kind of house that we want to get. So we're looking at San Francisco as one. Uh, we looked at Santa Barbara as another one. Mm -hmm. And also for me, I live in Toronto and it's cold and I want to get out of here and go somewhere warm. So that's, uh, that's also a big incentive for me to go and do that too. That's awesome. Okay, well, I... Thank you so much for your time. But I do want to end with what I call like my lightning round fun questions. Sure. Okay. Um, and you just answer them any way you want. Okay. So um, what's a crazy but true fact about you that no one knows? A crazy but true fact about me that no one knows is that uh, when I was a kid, I don't know exactly how old I was. I was probably about three or something. I punched Mick Jagger in the nuts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because he, my dad had a restaurant in London, uh, which of course for the Rolling Stones from uh, Mick Jagger uh, at the time lived in London. And uh, he used to come in before they opened and he would get stuff done. And my dad introduced me to him one time. And I guess I was uh, scared of him or something. I don't really know what happened. I have no memory of this. And apparently I just punched him right in the balls. And uh, <laughs> and not a lot of people can say that, that they did that. But <laughs> that's, that's probably my, my weirdest, most interesting fact. Oh my God, you know, we could just end it right here, but I'm going to ask you a couple of more questions. Just a couple of more questions. It's unbelievable. That was unbelievable. <laughs> um, if you could go back in time to talk to the 18, 19 year old JK, what would you tell him? Mm. Oh man, I would say you're going to have a lot of success coming up. Don't spend it on silly shit. Don't, don't rent a Rolls Royce for the weekend. Yeah. You don't need to do that. You to go and see the penthouse suite in every hotel you go to. Um, uh, just be sensible. Uh, yeah. uh, that's probably the best advice I'd give myself. And I, I, I have to tell myself that all the time because I do have a tendency to overspend on stuff and to kind of live a bit more frivolously. And yeah. I have to tell myself not to do that, that I need to be focused on what I have to do because I have a long way to go from where I am now to where I eventually want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, I want to I want to thank you for joining me, um, you know, on this episode of, of the MMO Insiders. So there you have it, everyone. J.K. Dottle. Now, if you found this content to be helpful, then please like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future episodes of the MMO Insiders. I've also included all the links to any of the products that J.K. has mentioned. So go ahead and take a look at those. The 10X Mastermind Group, if you're not a member of that, then go ahead and join that. That is completely free. And if you are looking to start affiliate marketing, then click on the link below to follow a proven beginner-friendly strategy to start your online business today. I'm Ken Furukawa from KenFurukawa.com, and I'll see you in the next episode of the MMO Insiders. Cheers.